Greetings and salutations, friends and gamers of all stripes. My name is GM Dave, your man behind the screen, and I'd like to welcome you to a new episode of Dungeons and Discussions. On today's episode, we're going to be going through a new PDF just released by Andrew Armstrong of Dawnforge Cass, Before Fandelver. Now, Before Fandelver is both a tutorial and alternative start for the Lost Minds of Fandelver adventure that comes with the starter pack for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. Now, as I'm sure you can imagine, because Lost Minds of Fandelver comes with the starter pack, it's the introductory adventure that a lot of players have, not just coming into D&D 5e for the first time, but D&D in general for the first time. And while Lost Minds of Fandelver is a perfectly fine and fairly fun adventure path on its own, in terms of actually introducing new players and new GMs to the concepts and rules of D&D 5e, it doesn't do a very good job. Well, Andrew noticed this as well, and he decided that he was going to take it upon himself to fix that by developing an alternative start that gives new GMs and new players alike a step-by-step -step process for how they can learn the various rules and the various different types of things you can do in a D&D game. Well, does he succeed in this? Let's go ahead and take a look. So as you can see, uh, the PDF is laid out pretty nicely. It's got a nice little uh, bit of art here. Everything is clear and legible. He clarifies exactly what his mission is with the PDF right on the front page. And then moving on, we get the standard sort of setup, double uh, double column setup that you see in D&D books. Little bits of art peppered throughout, stat blocks where needed. Really, this is the only one but we'll get into that in a bit. What I want to focus on first is the very first thing he mentions on page two when we get into the document proper, and that is what he calls the main point. And this is a point he makes that I feel is particularly important and that I particularly agree with. So I want to say right off the bat, Andrew, very good on you for not only making this the very first thing you read, but putting it front, center, bold, and making it so that it is literally impossible to miss unless you're literally not moving past page one. Your objective with the first session is not to achieve flawless execution of the rules. This is something a lot of new players do make the mistake of. You get so focused on all these rules, all these things you need to keep track of that you forget you're not there to make that perfect. Your goal is to get your players excited to play D&D. That should be the thing that you keep in mind with everything you do. So immediately, I have to give props to Andrew for making that front and center the main thing, first thing you read going into the document proper. Now moving forward into the document, we see sections on DM preparation, how to handle pre-made characters, how to handle players coming with custom characters, what we need to do to prepare the game space, and preparing your gaming table when you're playing in person. Not only that, you also see how to prepare your mental space. The first game of D&D people play, even with a version of D&D as simple and easy to start with as 5th edition, is very daunting due simply to the fact that there are so many rules, so many numbers, so many different things to keep track of. Having these three thick rule books, or even if you don't have the three rule books, even if all you have is a player's manual, having that thick rule book in your hands can be very scary the first time you look at it. It can be exciting, but scary. So, Andrew makes a note here of things that you can do to prepare your mental space for the game because the biggest fear that pretty much any new player and especially any new DM has is they're going to ruin the game, they're going to ruin the fun of their friends by screwing up. Well, As Andrew points out here, don't worry about that. Your goal is just to make this as fun as you can. Mistakes are going to happen. That's fine. It's a learning process, but you're all learning together. So if you're all learning together, you're all making mistakes together, you're all on equal footing. Some people might get it faster than others, that's fine. Those people can help the people who are struggling. But the main thing you got to do is take that deep breath and tell yourself it's okay with mistakes. When mistakes happen, 
I don't have to worry about it. See, I just made a stumble back there. I just made a mistake back there, and I moved right forward with it. That's what you got to do in that first session, in all those early sessions, until you get more experience. Andrew points that out very early on, very clearly, and he makes it crystal clear that your mistakes are okay. Just learn from them, keep moving forward, and you will improve. You get further notes on preparing the players, things like this, and then moving on, you get into ways to get the players ready to lead into the session, because after all, you're probably playing with friends. You're all going to want to talk with each other, have a chat, have some fun beforehand, but don't forget that you're there to play the game. Allow them to talk, allow them to have their fun, just remind them leading into it that hey, you know, we're getting ready to play the game. Oh, maybe you can use this time to discuss your character concepts, this and that, who you're playing, so on and so forth. And then leading into the game, let them know when it's about five minutes to start. Oh, okay, guys, we're getting ready to start. Let's move to the table, so on and so forth. Andrew lists many different ways that you can state this to your players. He makes it very clear what sort of game, how to explain what sort of game it is you're playing to people who don't know, gives tips on using voices for NPCs that you're playing to increase the depth, ways to get more comfortable with role playing, so on and so forth. Now in terms of what the document itself provides, it's more than just these bulleted lists of ideas and notes to keep in mind. Andrew also includes these double barred sections. Now these sections are areas where you are going to paraphrase in some manner what he suggests here. These are suggested things for you to say to not only move the game forward but to keep your players engaged and ways that you can explain what the different roles and different dice they'll be using are, why they're important, why their ha characters have to use them, and how to make those roles and read those character sheets. Going through the document, you can see he's got plenty of these sections explaining all sorts of different things. He's got areas for the DM to paraphrase character introductions, both as a narrator and in the voice of the character. He's got places for the DM to paraphrase the different rules or paraphrase different descriptions or how to address the players. He gives suggestions on how DMs can Roll with the punches when their characters give specific suggestions on things. All in all, there's a lot of useful stuff in this document. He includes, in total, 12 pages of content, including the cover page. In those 12 pages, you get suggestions on how to set up your session, suggestions on how to set up your table, ways to involve your players into the session before it starts ways to involve your players in the session both in a role play aspect and in the mechanical aspect of rolling dice, adding numbers, so on and so forth directly. He provides a stat block for you to use for an introductory fight to show them the different things that can happen and that they can do in combat. He provides suggestions and ways to Explore different skill checks, explore different saving throws, explore social skills versus knowledge skills versus physical skills, so on and so forth. On top of all this, he also provides, at the end, a nice tavern cellar map to use with that introductory combat. He provides it both with a grid and without a grid, so that you, depending on your preferred style of play, can use it both ways. D&D 5e does not necessarily have to be played with a grid, since the grids usually use one-inch squares. You could also potentially use a ruler to measure out the pace of your characters, meaning you can play without the grid as well, if that fits better for you. Andrew kindly provides that here. Furthermore, he ends the document with ways that you can work into the Lost Minds of Phandelver, including the specific pages that you lead into from his document here. This is a fantastic way to integrate this document with the Lost Minds of Phandelver and makes it wonderful as a tutorial leading into that document. However, while the stated goal of this document in the title is to be a tutorial and alternate start for that adventure, Andrew has stated in his own video discussing the release of this document that there's a second goal here as well. The, the Before Fandelver document is also meant to act as a general tutorial that can be used 
by any players and any GMs for any campaign. Now, one might be wondering, how is that possible? He uses the names and races, stats, so on and so, or makes stats and so on and so forth for the different characters and early encounters from Lost Minds of Fandelver. How can this be tuned to you be used for any other adventure when it's already got this in here? Well, it's very simple, actually. See, Andrew was very careful in the way that he wrote this. As I read through this earlier, I tried to bear in mind when he noted that he wanted this to be usable for any other uh, first-time session as well, to teach anybody at any first time session, the basics of D&D, how to use skills, how to do saving throws, how to engage in combat, deal with different status effects, role play, so on and so forth. I bore in mind that entire time, this is meant to be used outside of this adventure as well, and asked myself constantly, does it succeed in this? The ultimate answer I came to is yes. It absolutely does. And the reason it succeeds in this is because Andrew, with the careful way he wrote it, left this adventure open, or left this intro open to being altered in small but significant ways so that it can fit directly into any adventure that you are running as an introductory tutorial to all the basic concepts of D&D. And the way you do that, that simple change you make, is by simply altering the names and races of the different NPCs to whatever you like, to whatever fits your setting. Do that, and before Fandelver can fit literally any game that has new players and act as a step-by-step -step introduction for those new players and for GMs who might not be used, who experienced or not, might not be used to dealing with new players, to get those new players hooked in the game. Before Fan Delver, in the end, I give it a straight 5 out of 5. This is an absolutely fantastic document. Well written, easy to understand, clear, concise, simple to follow, beautifully put together, with great little additions in those last two pages with those maps. Really, any criticisms I have are very minor, and they're nitpicks. Honestly, the only big ones that I had actually were the map for the grid, it doesn't quite fit the grid white, but hardly a big deal since this area is actually populated with uh, with different items anyway, so chances are the players won't be moving there, though they can, and by doing so they can learn how to move through difficult terrain. There was one other also, I believe it was on here on page 8, there was a typo I noticed, Andrew, here in your note on role-playing. You did make a typo right here. Um, if they choose this role play, uh, should have been if they choose to role play. Just a small thing that got missed. Wanted to point that out to you. Beyond that, this is an absolutely fantastic document. I highly recommend it to anyone. The document is available for purchase on the DMs Guild. It will only cost you two dollars. It's a great way to get new players introduced to the game. Easy to convert for any adventure, not just Lost Minds of Fandelver, but if you have Lost Minds of Fandelver, this fixes that core problem that that adventure had of not really explaining how the different rules and different functions of D&D really work so that new players and new GMs can get an easy grasp on it. Now before I finish this video up, I do want to make a small note even though I am a longtime patron and a longtime fan of Andrew and Don Forged Cast, to be honest, I actually wouldn't have even started my own YouTube channel if it wasn't for them. Andrew, as well as quite a few other tabletop YouTubers, all of them are going to get some credit here on my channel eventually. But Andrew's channel was the key inspiration for me finally starting this up myself. So because of that, I absolutely understand that there may be some people out here who are going to view what I'm doing as a bit of shilling, a bit of nepotism. And, you know, yeah, technically I am, I am kind of shilling here. However, I want to make it absolutely clear, I get no financial benefit whatsoever from sharing this document, from giving this review. 
I did not have any involvement with the editing of this document. I didn't select any of the images. I didn't set up the layout. I didn't read a damn thing about it before today. I simply found that this document was so worthwhile, even in spite of me being a fan, I found it worthwhile enough that I decided I wanted to put a review up going into why exactly I found this document to be so useful and so worth your time and your money. Two dollars is not a lot of cash. If you're interested in DMing 5th edition, if you're new to it, or if you're interested in DMing and haven't really dealt with new players before but have new players, this is a great way to get used to that. So with all that said and done, friends and gamers, did you find this review to be useful? Do you think you're going to check out before Fandelver yourselves? If you're interested in new in a DMing as a new DM with new players or an experienced one with new players but you haven't really dealt with new players in a long time, I really do recommend this. It's a fantastic way to get your players involved, to show them all the different aspects of D&D. And it would be actually very helpful in you finding out what aspects of the game they enjoy because by giving them that little introduction, you're going to give them a handheld way of understanding the mechanics, the role play, and sort of see whether or not they like it. So if you found this video useful or if you enjoyed it, please feel free to leave a like and a comment down below telling me why. If you'd like to see more of my content, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell notification button. It hasn't been the most reliable thing on YouTube lately, but occasionally it does still work. However, if you want reliable updates of when my content is uploaded, I strongly recommend following me on social media currently. I have an account on both Facebook and Minds. You can follow me there. Come the end of this week, I will also be joining Twitter and Gab, posting announcements there as well. Uh, I do want to note, though, I know that some people do get a little nervous when they hear oh, this guy's on Minds and Gab. I know that they have garnered something of a reputation of being a little bit dodgy. Personally, I have not found that to be the case with Minds. Gab is a little bit more unusual, but as someone who never enjoyed Twitter and Gab anyway, I can guarantee you, you will not find me interacting much with the peanut gallery there at all. All you're going to find from me on Twitter and Gab is updates for when my videos are being uploaded. So if those are your preferred platforms and you do want those updates, come the end of the week, you can follow me there as well. Links will be posted in the description of all my previous videos once I have those up and running. With that said, friends and gamers of all stripes, I sincerely hope, as usual, that you roll high, roll play well, and continue to game on. New players especially, I hope that your introduction to 5th edition D&D is an enjoyable one and that you have many wonderful memories in the years to come. My name is GM Dave, your man behind the screen, signing off for the evening. Thank you all for joining me, and have a wonderful night.